Good morning. Uh, I'm Mayor Pro Tem Delia Garza. I will be calling work session to order. We have a quorum. Um, the mayor won't be joining us today. His wife has having knee surgery, and we wish her a well and speedy recovery. Um, he also wanted the mayor also wanted to let everyone know that um, we will continue the the commission's um, appointments um, on Thursday. We'll continue to have that discussion on Thursday, and he's going to be posting something on the message board. So we have a quorum. We're in boards and commissions in City Hall, 301 West 2nd Street. It's Tuesday, February 5th. It is 9:10. I think I already called the meeting to order. Um, we're going to start start with a staff briefing on our budget process. Um, then we're going to do um, Council Member Kassar is going to do a presentation. Um, then we're going to move to pulled items. And right now the items are 34, 35, 47. 48 and 55, does anybody have any other items that they wanted to pull now? Okay. Um, and we will be breaking. Um, I think there's more than about five people going to a lunch at 1130. So we're breaking for that unless, for whatever reason, we don't lose our quorum, then we can uh, continue the meeting and hopefully we'll get, we'll, um, we can finish everything by 1130. Did you have something? I did. Mayor Council, uh, as we kick off the presentation on the budget outline, just a little bit of context. As you remember, late last year, we talked about some dates for this discussion and how it would roll out throughout the year. We wanted to make sure that our new council members were a part of that discussion before anything was finalized. And so here we are today to talk about how the 2020 uh, bus, uh, budget process will play out. And so Ed Vanino, our budget director, will walk through that presentation. Uh, good morning, Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council. My name is Ed Vanino, Deputy Chief Financial Officer for the city. It's a pleasure to be before you again talking about the city's budget. I'll warn you in advance, this is our 2020 budget, so expect a bunch of quippy references to bringing things into focus, um, vision, improving the clarity. Um, you know, and even our, our, even our design, when we worked with our fabulous friends at PIO on a design, I said, I want something that looks like, you know, 2020 vision. So this is supposed to be like bringing things into focus, like an eye thing you would see at your, uh, at your eye doctor's office. But anyhow, just be forewarned on that. Um, so, you know, in starting our discussion about the 2020 budget direction and process, really wanted to go back to last year's budget process. You all adopted the budget. Um, on September uh, 12th, I believe, and you can see on September 13th here, the city manager had already put out a memo congratulating staff, thanking staff, but also warning staff that, um, you know, not to expect the 2020 budget to be a repeat of the 2019 budget. I had told you last year that the 2019 budget was really one of the best fiscal situations I had experienced as a person who had been involved in budgets for 19 years. There was just a lot of things that fell the right way for us last year where we were in the fortunate position of being able to fund a lot of priorities, which was a great position to be in the first year of, of having our new strategic plan, SD23. We were able to implement a lot of new initiatives to move the ball forward on that plan. But, um, uh, you know, the manager warned folks last year, you know, kind of highlighted one of his quotes here about, um, you know, we can't count on that in future years and that his um, direction to, to staff was to start getting ready to focus this year's budget on continuous improvement, effectiveness, and efficiency. Um, and that's particularly salient advice given the, the threat that looms from the state legislature about us having a very significantly different and worsened revenue um, um, situation as we move forward as the discussion about revenue caps continues on at the state legislature. But with all of that as backdrop, we have been, since um, early January, we have been pushing out to our department directors, to our um, department budget staff, to boards and commissions. This mess is in a fiscal year 2020. It's going to be a year where we're focusing on holding the line on budget increases, other than base cost drivers. You know, so I, when I say hold the line on budget cre increases, there will be budget increases. We have contracts we've agreed to with our public safety unions. We anticipate that there will need to be some degree of civilian wage increase to keep pace with the rising labor market. Health insurance costs, things of that nature are going to go up. That always happens. But other than those types of things, we are really going to be focusing our departments on holding the line on budget increases and instead taking um, uh, the opportunity to focus internally. 
and really challenging our departments to look for ways to improve the efficiency and the effectiveness of their existing city services. How can we do, how can we deliver even better service quality um, at, a, at a better price? Um, so that would be one of the focus areas. Um, of course, continuing the efforts to focus um, department missions, goals, and programs on SD23. Kim Oliveris in the Office of Performance Management um, have already launched an effort with that, so, right? So now that we have Strategic Direction 2023, we need to make sure that all of our missions and goals and what departments are doing um, are in alignment and support the objectives of that plan. Um, and then finally, we really want to target um, equity-related issues through our community input this year. And I'll talk a little bit more about that on the next slide, but we had some great success with our Quality of Life Commission's last year, it was, um, our, our, our process was very well received by them and that's something that came from direction from council was to change that process and the way we engage our Quality of Life Commission's um, and we're building on that. We've already started building on that success from last year um, for this next year's process. This is what our timeline looks like and at least from January through, through June, I've divided it into three tracks. These are three things that are going on um, concurrently and they'll all come together in June. The first of those tracks is is kind of perhaps the most mechanical of the tracks. It's just developing our base um, budgets and so we've already kicked that off. We had a budget kickoff with financial staff on January 16th um, to lay out some directions in regards to development of their base budgets. When you hear me say base budgets just think about business as normal but costs typically go up from one fiscal year to the next, and so we need to adjust for those costs. It's not focusing on new initiatives or new programs or realigning activities. It's just business as normal base budget. And so that's what our departments are doing right now. They're working on developing their baseline expenditure and revenue forecast for our enterprise departments. They're also forecasting out what rates they'll need to charge um, and if there'll need to be any increases in rates in order to pay for their base cost increases um, we will be before this body on um, April 9th um, to talk about our base financial forecast. Um, I'll just mention right there that the, the few little squares on this, um, on this table that are highlighted, uh, those are council meetings. So that April 9th is, is highlighted in blue. That is a council meeting date. So that's our base budget track. Um, we, our second track that we are concurrently working on are boards and commissions and community engagement. Again, we had great success last year, I think, um, and we wanted to build on that. And one of the things we heard from the Quality of Life Commissions is they really wanted to get out of the community and, and hear from their constituents more directly leading up to them making budget recommendations. So that's one thing we're working with them on. Um, another thing you might notice on this schedule is that it brings the dates way forward. So typically we would be doing community engagement and working with our boards and commissions more intensively in the April, May timeframe. Um, that really is, is too late for us to do as much as we would like to with the recommendations because our departments are already well, well into budget development by May. You'll see in a little bit that we ask departments to submit their budgets to us for final review in early June. So if we're not getting feedback from boards and commissions until late May, it's just too late in the process. So. We've um, really tried to front load this process and asking our boards and commissions to get us their recommendations to us by May 3rd. Um, I do also want to talk on this section that last year we did a lot with the Quality of Life Commissions. There's a working group of those four commissions um, and with their support we're going to be kind of broadening some of our emphasis out this year to include all eight of the commissions that comprise the city's joint inclusion um, commission. We have a meeting of the Joint Inclusion Committee coming up this Saturday and um, we're going to be talking to them trying to finalize a, uh, a community engagement plan and talk to them about this whole process of, of bringing forward their budget recommendations. And while we're focusing on those Joint Inclusion Committee um, Commission groups, we're going to be working with all of our boards and commissions as always. So the Public Safety Commission, Parks Commission, um, etc. Departments will be engaging those commissions in the conversations, but the same way that um, we were stressed to you, we have been stressing to them throughout our conversations that this year's budget process is not going to be focused on creating a, a long list of budget wants and asks. We just are not viewing it as that being the, the, the type of budget we're looking at this year. So um, we're going to be focusing them on the same types of issues, effectiveness and efficiency of programs, alignment to the strategic plan, and improving equity. 
Then the final track is, is your track, the city council and your priorities. Um, as you can see, we're here on the 5th just talking about our budget process and timeline. Um, the next colored date, the, the green one there, is March 5th. Um, that'll be council priority setting, and so that's earlier than we've done it in the past. In the past, we've been talking to you about your priorities in April. Um, we want to do that on March 5th. So that's the next thing that's really coming up. In just one month from today, we'll be sitting here talking to you about what your priorities are for the 2020 budget, and I think that one's coming up so quick. I've got a, one slide just on that date to talk to you about what we have planned for it. Um, before we get to that date, though, we are planning on doing some one-on-ones with you. So I think one of the real improvements we made to our budget process and one of the real ways we were able to communicate with you all better and get feedback from you all was just to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with you where we could, um, you know, just, just talk directly about what you're hoping to achieve in the budget and, uh, and help you with any questions or information needs you had. So we will be continuing to do that in this budget price process early and often throughout the throughout the year. Um, after we get your priorities, the city management team, uh, the city manager and his assistant city manager group, his executive team will get together and provide another round of directions to the departments. So we've already provided directions to the departments in regards to the base budget, but in, gar in regards to addressing council priorities, there'll be another round of input in March, and then the expectation is for departments to um, provide responses to that direction by late May. And then all of this comes together with proposed budgets coming into the budget office in early June. Um, once we get the proposed budgets from the departments, we'll do a lot of vetting of those numbers. Um, and then we will work with the city manager's office again to, to craft all of this into a, um, a balanced budget proposal to the city council. On this next slide, you'll get that balanced budget proposal on August 5th. Again, I'm just highlighting that we'll be doing one-on-one with council um, prior to that budget proposal coming out. Um, we've got to go through a number of administrative, you know, legal hoops to get to a budget adoption date. So we'll be setting the maximum tax rate on August 8th. You can see we have budget work sessions scheduled on August 20th, um, 29th, and September 4th. Um, and then finally, our, our public hearings are on August 22nd and August 28th, all leading up to a planned budget adoption on September 10th. The only other thing I want to highlight on this slide is all the dates that are not in bold are already on your calendar. You don't need to worry about, but the dates that are in bold are, are being proposed by staff. They're not currently on your calendars, um, and so they would need to get added. And so you can see them there, the, the budget presentation on August 5th and the, uh, the two latter work sessions on August 29th and September 4th would be new dates on your calendar. <clears throat> So the last thing I wanted to talk about is just this March 5th priority setting work session that comes up, uh, that is coming up. Um, most of you were at that. Um, of course, our two new council members were not, but we met over at the New Central Library to look at the strategic plan and ask council to help us of all the things that are in the strategic plan. We understand they're all important or they wouldn't be in your strategic plan, but of all those things in your strategic plan, what are the things that you think are most important for the city to focus attention, its attention on and to get better at? And over on the right, those are the 10 indicators that you said you thought were the most important things. Um, I won't read them all, but just to give you a flavor, it was you know, housing and homelessness and the skills and capability of our community workforce. These are the indicators that you really want us to focus on, and that was hugely helpful to staff because then we were able to um, work with our departments to develop budget proposals that really were focused on those areas. And then we were able to present the budget to council around, around those themes as well. So we have a variation of that plan for March 5th. Um, at the time we met last year, we did not have the detailed metrics developed yet. So all of these indicators, like housing, have more detailed metrics defined for each of them. There's about five or six metrics for each one of those indicators. Um, the Office of Performance Measurement has um, coordinated that effort with departments to develop those metrics, and they've actually developed these really nice graphical dashboards for each of those indicator areas. Um, they have already scheduled open houses on those dashboards for February 18th and, and the 22nd. And so the idea behind those dash or those open houses are for you all and your staffs to be able to come and see the dashboards, have them presented to you, um, respond to any questions you might have about them. 
but we would like those metrics as presented in the dashboards to be the foundation for our, our March 5th work session. What we would like to do is kind of similar to last year where we polled you all and said, hey, of all these indicators in the plan, let's do some polling first and understand what council's priorities were and then start looking for consensus from that. We want to do the same thing. So if you think about f five or six metrics related to housing, hey, if they're all of equal importance to you, let us know that. They're all of equal importance, and we'll try to put equal emphasis on all of them. But if some of those metrics related to homelessness you feel are really critical for us to get better at, maybe they're all important, but maybe some of the metrics you think our level of service currently is just fine, but there's some that you think we need to do better at, that's what we're hoping to get out of the March 5th work session. So we're going to put together a little exercise where we could do some pre-polling so that when we get here on the 5th, we can say this would seem to be a starting point for the co that conversation. Within housing, these are the metrics that seem to rise to the top of the priority list. Within homelessness, these are the metrics that seem to rise to the top of the priority list. Because that will give us some really granular information from this body to take to our departments and say, look, we need budget proposals that are going to improve these areas. Even if that's not about new money, right, we're talking about not having a budget year, we're going to be able to fund a lot of new initiatives, but that doesn't mean we can't be reshaping our services and programs to improve the metrics that council has said are important. So that's our vision for the fifth, um, and that is all I have for you. I do want to highlight the more information um, web links there at austintexas.financeonline. You can find um, all the presentations we make throughout the budget process, including this one, will be available at that austintexas.gov website, past budgets are out there, um, a whole wealth of information. And then at budget.austintexas.gov is where you can go to get to that really cool open budget tool where you can just sit there and point and click and drill down into the city's budget in as much detail as you want and see what the budget was and what departments have spent to date. Um, generally, when you all ask me a question about the budget over the phone, I'm going out to open budget Austin and, 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 and digging into the data. So. It really is a wealth of information for you all, and I just wanted to bring the website to your attention again. Um, it's still a fairly new tool, but um, it's a very useful tool. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Councilmember Kitchen, do you have a question? Oh, um, yes, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, I, I wanted to, I'm hoping, and I think, I think this is probably inherent in what you're talking of, about, but I'm hoping that when, that, I, I guess I would characterize it maybe a little differently as in not can't fund new initiatives, but I, I'm hoping that we're really asking our departments to look closely at what's happening right now. So perhaps there's room for and should be room for new initiatives while we're phasing out old initiatives that perhaps aren't working as well or perhaps have, have accomplished their purpose. Right. So, um, and we've, you know, we've talked about that before. I think Councilmember Alter has raised that before. So I, I think I would hope that this is the time that we really do look at that. Uh, uh, that is, that, is that, that was the, the direction? That was the intent of my comments. So yeah, I like the way you worded it. If I worded it differently, but that is absolutely the intent. Just because there is this looming threat of revenue caps from the state legislature, that doesn't mean that. We just sit on our hands and what we're doing is what we're doing. There is lots of latitude to be looking at programs that aren't working effectively and reinvesting in new programs that we think will have better outcomes. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Flanagan. Thank you. Um, I know, Mayor Bertem, you've talked a lot about that same issue about finding programs that maybe could be better allocated to, to other things. And it's just, I think we just have to acknowledge that it is not going to be an easy thing for us to do. I think we should do it. And it's not necessarily programs that have completed their purpose, but maybe that the purpose they're completing is a smaller impact than where those dollars could otherwise be spent. But with the acknowledgement that there's going to be, you know, 40 people that show up at a council meeting yelling and screaming about that program. But to those 40 people, you know, we have to be pretty straightforward about the coming up on a million people that we have to serve with this budget. So I, I really, really hope staff can find a way to daylight these choices up to the council because I'm excited to, to finally fulfill some of that stuff that the Mayor Bertem and, and Councilmember Alter and, and many of us have been talking about. Councilmember Renteria. Oh, yes. And, uh, can you tell me, uh, I, I would like to see on March 5th a report back of how much tax breaks and tax credits that we're offering these uh, uh, one instance like the domain 
you know, uh, we waived a lot of taxes there. And uh, I want to find out exactly the amount, because if the state's going to come after us, we might have to just pull back on some of these type of tax credits that we offer to these cor businesses, because, you know, it it's, uh, was under the understanding that we were supposed to let growth pay, and they were going to, and we gave these groups uh, uh, a lot of tax breaks and tax credits. And I want to see how much do we offer them so that the state legislators know exactly what we're giving to these businesses so businesses can grow. And if they're going to be out here restricting us, I want to make sure that we're going to be able to recover a lot of those resources that we might go without. And I can tell you off the cuff, it's in the neighborhood of $15 million in aggregate, but we have that information. We'll get it posted as a budget question in the next day or two. Thank you. Councilmember Kassar. Yeah, and I just want to say out loud what I think is already in the room, which is that this is an awful presentation to receive, right? I mean, what we do, and it's not your fault, obviously. <laughs> uh, but, but I don't want 40 people coming in and yelling about which program we would cut, rather 1,000 people or 2,000 people coming and yelling about the fact that in a time of, of unprecedented prosperity in the city, we're having serious conversations about not helping more people. In fact, if we keep our budget similarly the same because dollars run shorter, we will be helping fewer people um, um, when we absolutely don't have to uh, because there is forced austerity that is uh, uh, you know, being declared by statewide leaders as on the way. I mean, it sounds like a, I mean, like a winter is coming um, uh, type presentation, right? I mean, we're talking about um, uh, not just not adding programs, but not adding programs so that we can store money away so that we have hard, you know, have conversations about not just saving those $15 million, but that probably won't cut it, right? Talking about which fire stations we do or don't staff or which libraries we do or not consolidate or close or not open, which staff we do or don't lay off, how people deal with not getting cost of living increases. I mean, those are the conversations that we will be forced to have. And so I just don't think that even if we find programs that aren't, that aren't working as well, even if we find those, there, there is just no way that we can help the people that it is we've been talking about in our strategic work sessions that we want to help. Uh, we'll be talking about how to mitigate hurt. Uh, and depending on where, you know, my, my hope is, of course, that legislators uh, recognize that they're not going to provide real tax relief, and in indeed they'll just hurt everyday Texans. Um, but, and I think it makes sense for us to prepare in this way, but I just want to say out loud what's in this room, which is our strategic meetings have regularly been about how, who it is that we want to help and how it is we can use the city's budget to help more people. And what we're being presented is the unfortunate fact that given that it seems like um, uh, the legislature is more interested in forcing austerity on people rather than helping them, that we have to start preparing for that, for that potential. Uh, and I appreciate all of our staff and our manager and the budget office for looking at that in a clear-eyed way, but I just don't want it to go unsaid. So I appreciate your work, and we'll do everything we can to, to make it, uh, to have made this uh, just an exercise in what if something horrible happened. Um, but, but it is important for us to to plan for something that could really, really hurt people in Austin without saving them very much money. In fact, I think it will end up costing them. Councilmember Alter. Thank you. Um, I think it's important that we recognize that there's two parts to the budget situation that we're facing this year. One is that last year when we um, got to budget, we had done a lot of things right over the prior year that put us in a good financial position to have um, options and things that we could reinvest our money in. And this year, we are not going to have necessarily the advantage of that with um, the way the revenues are coming in and just because we took advantage of a lot of those things last year. Then in addition, there is the potential threat of the revenue cap. So there's, there's two things working. We had a very fortunate year last year because we did some hard work that was necessary to get us into that position. And then this year we don't have all of those um, things coming together. The revenue caps, I think um, we need our community to recognize 
these decisions that may be before us. And we need our community to be raising their voices at the Capitol and recognizing that there will be things that we will not be able to fund, whether they're new things or old things. Those additional police officers that you're asking for, where's the money going to come from? The additional firefighters, where's the money going to be coming from? That park where you want to have equipment that is safe for your children to go on, that pothole that you want fixed, there are really very real choices that will be before us as we move forward if these revenue caps are imposed. And as I'm understanding the current proposal, um, which I don't have all of the details since we don't know them yet, it seems like not only are they imposing revenue caps, they are going to punish us for growing, for being the innovative city that we are that is attracting capital and saying that we can't grow it more than 2.5% even with our growth, if I'm understanding um, the numbers correctly. And that just seems totally counter to what the state of Texas should be um, asking us to do. Instead, they should be nurturing and cultivating Austin and imagine what we could do if we were working in support with the support of the state government. So I would um, you know, ask our community to recognize that revenue caps, so co although complicated, are real. Um, they come with a twin, which is school finance reform. And if you want to know where your property taxes are going, it is going to pay for schools all over the state because the state is not paying its share. Um, and we really have to understand this math, and we can't um, let ourselves be um, um, set up in a situation that we are blinded by what is the reality of, of these numbers. Um, I want to echo also what was said a little bit earlier um, with respect to finding um, ways to invest in our priorities. Um, we do need to stop doing some things and start doing others, but the fact of the matter is the huge portion of our budget is spent on personnel, um, and there's just only so much room to maneuver. We have to pay for the water chemicals that go into treating our water, and we have to be able to put our poles up and, and, and service them and do all of these things. We don't, there are a lot of things where we really don't have a choice if we want to provide the safety that um, we deserve. Um, there's a lot that could be said here, but I, I did want to make those few points. Thank you. If I could just piggyback off those comments and some of the, of, of the previous ones, um, this isn't just about our community members, you know, speaking up at the Capitol. Uh, our business community needs to be there as well. We approve millions of dollars in contracts, procurement contracts, every single council meeting. Um, I know we've had discussions about possibly having some kind of presentation where we can bring in the business community and do some kind of, you know, presentation that shows here are the millions of dollars in contracts that the city approves and um, this, these revenue caps could affect their abil our ability to continue to extend those contracts as well as those companies' ability to employ some of our Austinites. And so I think you know, that needs to be part of the conversation as well. Um, the, there was a resolution on retrospective review, and I was just curious if, if – um, and if we don't have an answer right now, I can, I can circle back. But that was about looking at old programs that maybe um, – aren't doing exactly what we, we need them to be doing or aren't necessary anymore. Um, just back to the conversation about, you know, um, efficiencies and improving the efficiency. So if I could get an update on, on where that yeah, was. Just real quick, that, that effort is well underway. Um, a very comprehensive process has been launched. Our departments have provided information. It's currently being looked at, but council is going to get a memo in maybe this week or next asking for an extension. It's well underway, but we're not going to be able to meet the deadline you asked for, but we are working on it. And, you know, I would say in, in, a, in a month or two, just off the cuff, I'm not directly responsible for that, but I would think in a month or two, you'll be able to see the results of that effort. Okay. And I was just, are the biggest changes the, um, the earlier process? I was trying to see what the biggest change. So like, the early February boards and commissions seem to make a bigger ch a change from previous budget processes as well as the community forums in March and April. I feel like those happened a little later. Well, they definitely happened later, and I'm glad you said that because we would still um, love the opportunity to come out to your town hall meetings. And you know, I was out at yours just last month, but, you know, next month, but May, June, July, August, throughout the budget process, I would love to come out to your town hall meetings and support those. 
but these community forums um, would be focused on the different equity commissions. So a community forum related to um, the African American Advisory Commission, a, hum a community forum related to uh, the Commission on Seniors. Um, so that those commissions, they've said they want to get feedback in advance of making recommendations to the city. So we're trying to help them and facilitate that conversation and to get those recommendations earlier enough where our departments can do something with them. So that's why we're bringing those up so far, so far but we still would be having other community engagement opportunities um, throughout the process. Okay, and, and lastly, I just, I, um, I, think, I think it's great that we're changing this to an earlier, um, you know, timeline, um, and I think it's an, all of us need to make sure that we're educating our constituents and are educating the public on this new process. I know that, you know, many times we get these, you know, requests like in late August or something, and, you know, it's, sometimes it's so hard to add additional things, so I think it's incumbent on us to have, as, as council members, to have a little more discipline about setting, ex managing expectations and making it clear that, that we're, you know, we're, we're doing budget different this year and, and we're, we really need input as early as possible and then the, there, there comes a point, you know, I know there's always emergency initiatives, but there comes a point where we have to be able to say, um, you know, most of the budget process is done and, you know, to listen, but I think it's important that we have maybe a little bit more discipline as council members to manage expectations, especially with, right. with looming um, um, revenue caps. So just real quick on that topic, we are working with um, our corporate public information office on outreach efforts and messaging, and we want to provide that to all of you. So to the extent you want to use it in your messaging to your constituents, you would have access to that as well. Council Member Topo. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you for this presentation and the opportunity to, to begin to think about how we're going to approach this year's budget. Um, I completely agree with, with Council Member Alter and others who have, who have really um, talked about the state and, and what needs to happen there. And I would, I would urge our legislators who are considering tax caps to really think through how this will impact um, cities throughout the state throughout the state, it, it is going to be, um, if it moves forward, would really have a, a dire impact. Uh, we do, I, I, my particular question is how we're soliciting community impact on the work that the staff is doing with existing programs. I think it's very important that the resolution has asked our management and our staff to look at the programs and determine effectiveness, but I think we also need to make sure that the community has an opportunity to provide that feedback as well as, in many cases, they're the ones engaging directly in those services. And I just want to say, you know, I, I appreciate the comments about early needs being identified. Um, we will always need to remain somewhat flexible to those needs that come up. And while it's true that we have organizations that come in and we need to manage those expectations that, you know, we, we will not be, it is a very different budget year and, and all of the things you all have said. It's also true that we sometimes have groups coming down and raising concerns because of dire needs that are not going to be met if we can't identify the funds. And I'll just, you know, re remind um, this group again that in, in some budget years, those last minute needs have preserved meals for seniors at our congregate meals programs. Um, in one budget year, it, preserve child care for women in our women and children shelters. So you know, I want to be sure that, that members of the public listening to this discussion don't get the wrong impression about the needs that we hear late in the budget process that we're trying to meet. And we will always need to have that. In my opinion, we always need to provide for that flexibility to meet those really important basic needs. And so that makes the work that you all are doing to identify the programs that may be less effective, um, really critical. So please do figure out a way to, to get that community impact on this as well, feedback on this as well. Councilmember Poole. Thanks, I just had two quick questions. Will we be doing a mid-year budget amendment this year? Are there any plans for that? Councilmember Poole, not that I'm aware of, but there will be um, things that do come up and we'll make sure that those are presented well in advance uh, so you can contemplate them before their their decisions before the council. Great, thanks. And then uh, for Mr. Benino, the fee schedule. Um, how are we doing on our enterprise funds paying for the work that they provide to the community? And will we be having updates on our fee schedule to ensure that rising costs are captured by the folks who are um, who go to those departments for services? 
which has been a policy of the council in the past too. Right. So, I mean, when it comes to the rising costs and having our fees keep pace with them, the enterprise departments generally do a very good job of that out of necessity. I mean, they're financially, they're islands unto themselves. And so if the resource recovery department's not charging high enough fees to cover the cost of curbside collection, they're gonna go into a negative and we'll have to remedy that. Um, on the general fund departments though is where we've been focusing our efforts to take a look at different services the departments charge a fee for and trying to keep those fees, to have them at least to some degree keep pace with growing costs. And so you, you saw last year a number of fee recommendation staff brought forward. Um, I anticipate we will do that again this year, bring forward a number of, of fee proposals to help offset tax burdens, um, which I think is gonna be more important than ever this year. Um, but I could follow up with you some too to see if there's specific departments or specific fees you're concerned about because we That's can certainly great. focus our attention on some of those. One of the places I'd like to, to look is in development services and make sure that all of the staff from the various departments yeah. are in fact um, receiving compensation through that process for the efforts, uh, the time and the effort that they're putting into right. reviews. And we have been working on that, so you will, see, you will see that. And of course, the development services department now set up as an enterprise has done a really good job of that. But some of the other departments, parks for example, um, we have not done as good a job assessing the fees to offset those costs, and so you'll see that this good. year, for sure. Thank you. Did you have something else, Councilor Kitchen? Yes, one, one last thing, and I apologize if you already talked about it, but in years past, we've um, received a list of resolutions that the council has passed that has not been funded. Um, I Did y'all talk about this already? No? Okay. I would like to see that list earlier in the process. Um, I'm thinking that for our March 5th, that that would be the time to, to make us aware of the things that we've passed that you know, some of those things were contemplated for um, for the next budget cycle, or there may be other other things about them about why they're not yet in programs. I'd like to understand that. For for the most part, I I think in terms of those as the new initiatives that we've already set as a priority, and so I would want to I, I would want them to be. I, w I would want departments to think in terms of how uh, of of operating those, putting the, making those operational, and considering what other kinds of programs they might need to adjust in order to do that. Again, we need to look at the list again to to think through whether our our, our memory my memory is correct on that. But that's why I'd like to see it on March fifth. Is that would that be possible? It would be. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for that sharp presentation. Is that him? Oh, yeah. Appreciate um, it. Very, fo very, very focused, focused, yeah. very focused Thank presentation. You.